Good morning, and welcome back to our Sunday service. And as usual, we'll begin with our call to worship. And since it's the Christmas season, our call to worship is from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 to 7. Verse 6, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you so much that 2,000 years ago you came into the world. God amongst men, God is with us. And in you, O Lord, we have hope. We have the hope of eternity, and we also have the hope of the present because of you and the work that you're doing in our lives. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now for the opening song. Living Hope.
Jesus, yours is the Once again, good morning and welcome back to our Christmas sermon series. And shout out to Nathan who's helping with the uh, audio visual. Now, for those of you who are viewing our online service for the first time, we want to welcome you to ACBC's online English service. Very happy that you could join us today. Maybe you've been invited by a family member or a friend, or maybe you just stumbled upon our video. And uh, we'd just like to thank you for joining us. Now, today's sermon is called, At Just the Right Time, Jesus Was Born. Or it can also be called the world when Jesus came. Because at just the right time, Jesus was born. And full disclosure, uh, parts of this sermon are based on a message uh, by, my, uh, by the president of my seminary, Def Dr. Jeff Org, uh, who spoke for us at the beginning of this year before the pandemic started. And uh, Nathan, I just realized I forgot the clicker. <laughs> I think you probably have to help me with the clicker. And uh, speaking about time, us humans often think back in time to our past as a better time. You know, we like to say those were the good old days. Those were the days when things were better. We think back to a time in our past when things were more innocent or when life was easier or when society was less complicated. We often think that the, the, that the past was better uh, than the present. For example, I recently read on a friend's Facebook uh, post uh, and like myself, he's a child of the 70s and 80s. He's part of Generation X. And so he reposted this post on his Facebook. And, uh, and, and what he posted kind of resonated with me. And for those of you who are in my generation, it'll probably resonate with you too. And this is what was posted on my friend's uh, Facebook posting. And let me just uh, read it to you. It, the posting says, I am a gener Generation X baby. Anyone who was born between 1965 and 1980 we are the last generation that played outside until it was dark. We are the first to play video games and the last to record songs off the record player or radio onto a cassette tape. We loved roller skating on Friday and Saturday nights. We were blessed with the music of Michael Jackson, Bruce Springsteen, U2 Queen. It was an era of extravagant everything. Uh, we took walks with friends without the, without the worry of being taken. We watched cartoons on Saturday mornings while eating a bowl of cereal. We programmed the VCR before anyone else. And if you don't know what a VCR is, it's okay. That means you're not part of that generation. And I'll continue on with the posting. We remember learning how to use a computer for the first time. We played Dungeons & Dragons, Atari, and Nintendo when Nintendo first came out. We are the generation of the Brady Bunch, Star Wars, Star Trek, Gilligan's Island, Dukes of Hazzard, Scooby-Doo, Little House on the Prairie, Happy Days, Saturday Night Fever, and Grease. We traveled in cars without seatbelts or airbags and lived without cell phones. We did not have flat screens, surround sound, iPads, Facebook, and Twitter, but we had a great time, all the time with each other. And the posting ends with copy and repost if this is you. So this was one of those Facebook posts which if you resonated with, you'll probably repost it on your own Facebook. Uh, af after I read this post, I thought, man... Boy, were the 80s, the good old days, you know, man, I missed that time of my life when I was a kid. You know, I remember growing up in Norman, Oklahoma, and uh, me and my friends, neighborhood friends, would just ride out on the streets without worrying about being kidnapped or taken or, or anything like that. And I thought, man, the 80s were a good time. But wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Were the 80s really good old days? 
I mean, after I thought about it, I remembered that back in the 80s, we were constantly afraid of war with communist Russia, with the USSR, and we were constantly afraid of nuclear war that would end the world. Even the enemies uh, in a lot of 1980s Hollywood movies were all co communist Russians for, for some reason or another. And if I remember correctly, there was a pandemic back then, different from the pandemic now, but there was a new disease that was causing people to be extraordinarily scared and it killed a lot of people. It was when AIDS first came onto the public scene. And if I remember correctly, President Reagan survived an assassination attempt the stock market took a nosedive in 1987, and I remember that drugs were becoming a big problem, and they started this Just Say No campaign, uh, which unfortunately didn't work. Now, when I think about my own personal life in the 80s, you know, there's lots of good things I missed, uh, you know, like playing with my friends uh, out in the neighborhood without fear of being taken or kidnapped and things like that, you know. It was a fun time, but there was also lots of things which I didn't miss about my childhood including the fact that my parents were fighting all the time. And uh, some days when it was particularly bad when they were fighting, I would cry myself to sleep, you know, with the, if my parents had fought especially bad. And so now that I think about it, hey, maybe the 80s were not the good old days. Maybe I just tended to remember the good stuff uh, after so many years have passed. And the Bible does talk about this in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, Verse 10, it says, Say not, why were the former days better than these? For it is not from wisdom that you ask this. This means that the good old days may not necessarily be better than what things are now. And when we think about Christmas, we think, man, the first Christmas is so much better than life right now. You know, back then, you had baby Jesus. He was all cute and cuddly. You had these cute farm animals in that barn. You had these angels. You had the shepherds. You had the wise men, etc., etc. Now we have COVID. We can't see our family anymore. We have a recession. Uh, we can't even buy gifts for people. You know, going out and buying gifts and giving it to people. And who knows what's going to happen next year. Man, things were so much better at the first Christmas. Those were the good old days. Question, but was it really the good old days back at the first Christmas when Jesus was born? Did baby Jesus really have it easy? Was his time much better and easier than ours? No, the answer is no, I don't think so. Baby Jesus was born into a time when there was political uncertainty, when there was financial confusion, and when there was spiritual disinterest. And it sounds a lot like our day. And he was born in a time of great uncertainty, and his life was actually in great danger. But Jesus came into the world at just the right time. And that's what we're going to take a look at in today's sermon. Jesus was born at just the right time. So actually, the world that he was born in wasn't that much different than our world. For example, in our world right now, there is still some political uncertainty. And uh, in the region of the world which Jesus was born in, in Palestine, there was a lot of political uncertainty back then. And most of this political tension or uncertainty centered around a very insecure king by the name of King Herod. And let's take a look at his story in Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 16. I won't read all 16 verses, but let's start with verse 1. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, in the days of Herod, the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Then Herod summoned the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to their, own, to their own country by another way. Verse 13, Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, and said, Rise, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night, and they depart departed to Egypt. 
Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious, and he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under, according to the time that he had certain from the wise men. So King Herod was in charge of an area of the Roman Empire known as Palestine. And he was in charge of Palestine when Jesus was born in Palestine. See, the Roman emperor was in charge of the whole empire, but he put King Herod in charge of his little kingdom in Palestine. And King Herod could do whatever he wanted in his kingdom at the far eastern edge of the Roman Empire. And King Herod is trying to kill Jesus. And he ordered the slaughter of many infants and toddlers in order to kill baby Jesus. Now, there's no other way for me to say this except for the fact that King Herod was an evil man. He was an evil man. I know in this postmodern world that we live in, we don't like to call people evil, but King Herod was an evil man. He was a symbol of dysfunction and evil. He was a deranged man. History records that Herod was an insecure leader who killed many people. So let me read to you a list of evil things that he did. King Herod was a polygamist who had at least uh, 10 wives. When King Herod first became king and his position was still weak, he married Maryam, who was the granddaughter of the former high priest, in an attempt to get her powerful family to support him. And Maryam bore him three sons, Alexander and Aristobulus, Aristobulus, as well as a third son who died young in Rome. And they had also two daughters. A few years later, Herod would execute his wife Maryam along with a few members of her family. He accused her of trying to plot to kill him. Now, this theme of accusing people of plotting to kill him to take over the throne will become very common in King Herod's reign. The King Herod would also later execute his sons, Alexander and Aristobulus. Three years after that, he would put to death his oldest son, Antipater, the second, Herod once again accused all three sons of trying to kill him and take over his throne. Can you imagine this man? He kills his own wife and his own children. Herod also confiscated property belonging to those who he believed did not support his rule. The confiscation of the wealth of the hostile Jewish upper classes made him exceedingly rich and provided Herod with funds to continue to pay his Roman overlords. Herod killed many other people. For example, Rebellion brewed near the end of Herod's life. And shortly before Herod died, there was a group that tried to pull down an eagle, which was a Roman symbol, uh, from the second temple, temple. And Herod had all these people executed. In fact, Herod was so despised that in his final days, just before he died, he told his sister uh, to kill many of the Jewish leaders after his death so that when he died, and they die too, the people will cry and mourn, not for Herod, but for these Jewish leaders who he did not like. So he would gather them into this house and lock them up in a building and get, ordered his sister to kill them when he died so that the whole nation would mourn because he knew that nobody would mourn him when he died. Uh, luckily, thankfully, his sister disobeyed and released these prisoners after Herod died. And this is the same King Herod who wanted to kill baby Jesus. He was a bloodthirsty, evil man, an insecure king who got rid of all political rivals and anyone else he suspected of trying to take power away from him. When I was a young Christian, I read about King Herod trying to kill the babies and toddlers of Bethlehem. I thought, could, could there be such an evil person? Now, after I understand the history of Herod, I can nod my head and said, this man indeed killed all the babies and toddlers in, Beth in, in Bethlehem. We realize it's true. He was an evil man, a monster, an evil, evil man. And the birth of Jesus takes place towards the end of King Herod's life. He had already killed many of his sons and rivals who wanted his throne, or to, he thought they wanted his throne. And now he hears about another Jew who would be king. And so he kills all whom he can in order to kill this newborn king and to make sure he doesn't take over his throne. That's King Herod. The world that Jesus was born into was one of political turmoil and uncertainty. Far worse than the situation we have today. Far worse. King Herod wanted baby Jesus 
dead. And yet in the midst of this political uncertainty, God is determined to come into the world of man, to walk among us, to be with us, to bring us the certainty of the hope of an eternal future with him. Jesus is born into a world of political uncertainty, and Jesus is determined to fulfill the Father's will for him to save our world. And part of that plan was for him to go to the cross, to die for the sins of all the world. There is also a lot of turmoil and uncertainty in our world today, but it's nothing that Jesus can't handle. It's nothing which Jesus hasn't seen before. He's not scared. He's concerned with your life and is determined to be with you in the middle of all this uncertainty. Jesus grants peace in the midst of uncertainty. And Jesus was born into a world of financial confusion. When he was born, at that time, they ordered a census that showed the financial policies and greed of the time. So let's turn to Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 7. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, the emperor, that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration where Crenius was governor of Syria. All, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was one of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. So basically, they were, the empire was taking a census. And so Joseph and Mary had to travel back to Bethlehem since Joseph is descended from David, King David. And by the way, 2020 is also the year where the United States of America is taking a census. And so why was the Roman Empire taking a census? One word, money. It's all about the money. The Roman census was for tax purposes, so the empire could collect money. The Roman emperor, emperor was very fond of taking census uh, because when you took a census, you could determine how many people there were and how much tax you could collect in other words, you could get more money, and it took a lot of money to keep the enormous Roman Empire army going, to build roads, to finance military campaigns, to finish conquering the world. Plus, the emperor lives a life of luxury and loved the, and loved, he loved to build stuff. The census was about money. It was a time of financial confusion. And let's read what happens to Joseph and Mary. So back to verses 6 and 7. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in, in, in a manger because there was no place for them at the inn. There is no place, no room at the inn for a pregnant woman. You know what this shows? It shows that their society was more concerned for money than for pregnant women who needed a room. Again, it was a time of financial confusion. And today, we still live in a time of financial confusion. We pay athletes the big money and teachers the little money. Less and less people control more and more resources. Our national debt is at its highest level in history. Oftentimes, our stock market and the economy is driven by greed. Today, our world also suffers from financial confusion. Not much different from the world that Jesus was born into, which also suffered from financial confusion confusion. And Jesus loved that world. He died for that world. And Jesus loves our world. He died for our world. And Jesus provides for us in the midst of financial confusion. He provides salvation. He provides peace. He provides security. He provides hope. And yes, he will provide you with the finances that you need to get through life. So Jesus was born into a world of political uncertainty, much like our world today. And Jesus was born into a world of financial confusion, much like our world today. And thirdly, Jesus was born into a world of spiritual apathy or disinterest, much like our world today. There's lots of predictions in the Old Testament of the Messiah being born, of the uh, of the fulfilling of the birth of Jesus. There are hundreds of prophecies in the Old Testament about the coming Messiah. And you would think that with all these prophecies, people will be excited, people will be looking forward to the birth of the Messiah, will be waiting expectantly for Jesus to arrive. And that's not what happened. There was Mary, there was Joseph, 
there were some shepherds, and there was Mary's cousin Elizabeth and her husband Zechariah. There was Simeon and Anna at the temple. Later on, there were some wise men, and that's about it. About a dozen or so people waiting for Jesus to be born. That's it. Just like our world today, the world that Jesus was born into was spiritually indifferent. Back then, the Messiah was born, the Savior of the world, the best thing to ever happen to our world. And that still, it still did not get the attention of the world. And today, we have even better news that Jesus not only was born, but he died and he was raised from the dead so that whoever believes in him can live eternally. And that still does not get the attention of people in our world today. People are still going about their lives as if God is not trying to get their attention. People are still sinning and still trying to live life on their own terms. People are still desensitized to sin and resistant to God. Today, we still live in a world of spiritual confusion, a spiritual apathy, a spiritual indifference, just like the world that Jesus was born into. And you know what's the good news? The good news is that Jesus is still interested in our world today. He grants salvation in, sp in spite of the spiritual confusion and spiritual indifference of our world. In spite of the spiritual apathy of people, God still loves us and wants us to know Him as Lord and Savior. Jesus came into, the, into a world that was messed up. Jesus was born into a world that was full of political uncertainty, where the crazy king was killing, killing any and all rivals to the throne, including some of his own sons. Jesus was born into a world of financial confusion, where census and selling rooms in an inn were more important than the welfare of a heavily pregnant young lady. And Jesus was born into a world of spiritual disinterest, where no one showed up to greet him except for a dozen or so folks, even though there were so many prophecies in the Old Testament about him. And the world we are living in today is also full of political uncertainty, financial confusion, and spiritual disinterest. And the best news is that Jesus grants us peace in the midst of all this uncertainty. And Jesus provides for us in the midst of our financial confusion. And Jesus grants us salvation despite the spiritual indifference. If you are not yet a Christian today, maybe your friend or family member invited you to view our service, or maybe you just happened to stumble upon, our, upon this video. Well, there's good news for you. The good news is that Jesus still wants to be part of this world today. He still wants to be part of our world today. He came into that kind of world, and He still wants to reach out to that kind of world today. And He wants you to be a part of His world. Jesus came into that kind of confusing world, and He's still here today. Jesus is not waiting for better times to do what He came into the world to do. He wants to be part of your life today. Jesus was born at just the right time to share the good news with a starving world. And He still wants to share His love with you today. The good news of Jesus is very simple. That Jesus, who is fully man and fully God and lived a perfect life, died on the cross for your sins. He died so that you can live. But that's not the end of the story. On the third day, He rose from the dead. Jesus is resurrected. He is alive. And because of Him, you can live. And all you have to do is admit that you've sinned, believe that He died for you on the cross, and confess Him as your Lord and Savior. That's all. So will you accept Jesus into your life? So I'll give you some time to think about that, and we'll get back to that question at the end of today's sermon. So we have talked about how the world that Jesus is born into is a lot like our world today in some bad ways. Well, the world that Jesus was born into indeed had a lot of political, political uncertainty, financial confusion, and spiritual indifference. But on the flip side, the world that Jesus was born into is also a lot like our world today in some very good ways. So we talked about the bad ways that our world and Jesus' world was similar. And now we're going to talk about the good ways that our world and Jesus' world are similar today. Because at, because at just the right time, Jesus was born. The world... And the world that when Jesus was born into, Rome was in control. And there was something called 
the Roman peace or Pax Romana. The Roman army made land traveling across the empire safe. In general, it was a very safe empire. The Roman navy made traveling the Mediterranean Sea very safe. There were very little incidents of piracy, and people get, could generally travel safely across the sea. And this peace enabled the spread of the Christian good news during the days of the early church after Jesus' resurrection. Because of this peace, the Apostle Paul could easily take the message of Jesus Christ to so many different cities and tell so many different people about Jesus. And there was something called the Roman roads. You know, there's an old saying called, all roads lead to Rome, and that is actually no joke. There were thousands of miles of paved roads across the Roman Empire for fast and easy travel throughout the Roman Empire. Sea travel was also very safe. So, so the scene was set for the quick and rapid spread of the good news of Jesus to all corners of the Roman Empire. How else would the Apostle Paul make, be able to make so many missionary journeys? And last but not least, least Sorry, last but not least, Greek was a common language during that time. Every nation had their own native tongue, but you needed to know Greek to be successful in global trade. So Greek could be used anywhere you went. And this allowed the good news of Jesus to be written down in Greek and quickly spread to different people. Paul would later travel to different places using Greek to share with different people about Jesus. And if you think about it, the world that we live in today is not so much different from the world in Jesus' day in these good ways because now we have world peace in general there is world peace yes i understand there's still some wars and conflicts in some parts of the world today i'm not trying to ignore those things but in general there is peace around our world that's why we're able to have trade with with most countries of the world today because of this world peace uh, just as in jesus time there was the roman peace secondly we have world travel today just as in Jesus' time when the Roman roads could take you anywhere. So right now, there's air travel to almost anywhere in the world. In fact, because we live in Los Angeles, you can reach almost anywhere in the world within 24 hours from right here in Los Angeles. Think about that. In Jesus' time, you couldn't even travel from Rome to America. A hundred years ago, it would take weeks for you to travel from Rome to America. Now we can do it within 24 hours. And now we have the internet. Within seconds, you can communicate with almost anyone in the world through the internet. Just a couple of weeks ago, Simon was sharing about how he could teach the Bible to the Roma, Roma people of Serbia through Zoom. And they are halfway across the world, yet connected in an instant because of the internet. And back in Jesus' day, there was a common language of Greek, which was understood throughout the Roman Empire. And today, there is a common language of English that is understood in many parts of the world. English is a language that allows us to do business in almost any part of the world today. The stage was set in Jesus' time for the fast and efficient spread of the good news of Jesus across the world. And the stage is set in our world today for the fast and efficient spread of the good news of Jesus across the world our world today. We live in a very unique time and age where the spread of the gospel to anywhere in the world is possible, just like in Jesus' time. So do not miss this opportunity. Before Christ comes back, let's share His good news. For those who are Christians, now I'm speaking to those who are Christian, Jesus says to deal with the world as it is. Let's deal with reality. Yes, it's a, feel, it's a world filled with political uncertainty. Yes, there's, it's a financially confused world. And yes, it's a world that's spiritually apathetic, especially here in America. But it is the exact type of world that Jesus came into. It is the exact type of world that Jesus died for. And Jesus has given us all that we need to share the good news. We have the Holy Spirit in us to guide and to lead us. We have the ability to connect with anyone in the world. We have English to communicate with. We have a relative uh, world peace that allows us to travel to different parts, different countries to share about Jesus. So I want to challenge Christians to live the gospel out in this world. Dem demonstrate a transformed life. Share the good news of Jesus with people. That Christ came into a world that was politically, financially, and spiritually confused. That He chose to love a world that condemned him and that he died on the cross for the sins of the world so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life and let our churches do likewise to share this good news to tell people about jesus to tell them about the christ who came in the midst of uncertainty 
to save them, to give them a certain hope, a certain future of heaven for eternity with Him in heaven. Let our churches be an oasis of sanity to launch the hope of the good news of Jesus into a confused world. Let us pray. And as we begin our prayer, I just want to speak first to the non-Christians who are viewing uh, this video. And if you feel led to accept Jesus into your life, maybe it was this message today or it was your family or friend who invited you to to listen to this message or it was, you know, throughout your life, maybe God has been touching you and you want to become a Christian, then say this simple prayer with me. I'll say one sentence you just follow at home. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross for me. I confess to you that I am a sinner and I need you. I believe in you, Lord. Be my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. And now I want to say a general prayer for everyone. Dear God, we thank you for your sacrifice for us on the cross. We thank you for coming into the world to walk amongst men, to be with us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for who you are and what you've done. In this season of Christmas, help us to remember your goodness, your grace, and your mercy in our life. We praise you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now for the closing song.
And now we're going to go into a time of announcements. And first up, uh, if this is your first time uh, joining us for our online service, please feel free to uh, take a picture of the QR code and, or go to the website, click on the web welcome tab and fill in the connect form. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us and we will get back to you. And also a reminder that online giving is still available. There's three different options. Take a picture of the QR code or go to the website listed there for the three different options for online giving. And also a reminder that outdoor services, services are ongoing. A service starts at 9.15 a.m. in the court, courtyard. Uh, physically distant, you must wear masks at all time. Uh, feel free to book online for the tickets. And do not come if you're feeling unwell. If you have your kids, please keep them with you. And this is the Eventbrite registration for the outdoor link. Uh, you can pause and take a picture of the QR code, or you can, if you want to be adventurous, you can type out the Eventbrite uh, website uh, name uh, that's listed right there. And next, uh, next Sunday, we will have a special Christmas service. Uh, it will be combined with the youth. We'll have a reading of scripture, singing of Christmas carols, and a short presentation of the gospel. So there will be different people who are involved uh, in this uh, special Christmas service. Uh, so stay tuned for this uh, next Sunday at 9.15 a.m. And, uh, and uh, this is a church-wide initiative, and we would like to be reading the Bible together over the course of three years. So this is very doable, bite-sized, about a chapter a day, reading through the Bible in three years, and we can start in January. So what we want to do, encourage you to do, is this. Uh, go to your phone app and download the YouVersion Bible app, or you can go to www.bible.com. Can't, doesn't get easier than that to remember. www.bible.com and download the YouVersion Bible app. Uh, and the, 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 the logo, the app logo, looks like that on top, the Holy Bible. That, that's what it looks like. If you see that, it's probably the correct app, YouVersion Bible app. And then download it, and then search for a chapter a day reading the Bible in three years. If that's too long, then just search for reading the Bible in three years. Uh, this is a particular reading plan, and you'll find the bottom logo, the blue one, that will be the correct uh, reading plan. But start with year one, quarter one. They have different years uh, and different quarters. So start with year one, quarter one, quarter one, sign up for that, and let's start together on January 1st. Uh, reading through the Bible together over the course of three years. It's very doable, about a chapter a day, and there's times when you can catch up uh, on your Bible reading. So we'll also be sending out an email about that, but please take note of this. And an uh, update on the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. Thank God we reached our church goal of donating at least $14,500 to the Lottie Moon Christmas offering. We are still accepting donations, so if you want to donate, please make your check to ACBC, but indicate on it Lottie Moon Christmas offering, and we will give it to Lottie Moon Christmas offering. All the money here goes to international missions, goes to missionaries in other, in, that are sent out in other countries. And do continue to pray for uh, international missionaries that the Southern Baptist Convention has sent out. And also a reminder uh, that the CMC conference uh, sign-up is actually still going. I think last week I told you that last Sunday is the last day, uh, but uh, they, we have extended it to December 27th. Uh, so you can still sign up for it for free, uh, but the steps are this. First of all, email your name, telephone, email address to Anna, and her email is listed there. And then a registration code will be emailed to you, and then with that code, go to the CMMC website and register for free. So if you want to know the speaker as well as the programs, the dates, the timing, well, the dates right there, December 28th to 30th, and timing's there too. But if you need to know what different uh, sessions there are, go to the website that's listed there or take a picture of the QR code that is listed there. You can pause and take a picture of the QR code. Next, a reminder, we're looking for a team of adults to work with the youth for a community outreach event in early 2021. Uh, to you know, this team will brainstorm and plan for the community outreach event. If you're interested, drop me an email at acbc.englishcongregation at gmail.com and we'll get you involved and part of this team. And uh, heads up uh, uh, on what's coming up. So a reminder that next Sunday is a Christmas service for both English and youth. and It will be a combined one. Uh, the, the Sunday after that is the last Sunday of the year. It will be a uh, year-end message. And I would like to share with you some lessons that I have personally learned uh, from this pandemic. 
And on the first Sunday of the year, oh, we have a guest speaker, Pastor Richard Chung. Uh, he's spoken uh, for us quite a few times before, so he's no stranger. And then the Sunday after that, on the 10th of January, we will be starting our sermon series on the Book of Romans. So we'll be going through the Book of Romans, uh, 16 chapters. We won't go through every verse, uh, but we'll go through it uh, through the course of a, few, a number of weeks uh, for next year. And next year we'll also have some topical sermon series also. And a reminder, for tax purposes, 31st of December is the last day for donations uh, to church to be classified for 2020 U.S. tax purposes. If you're mailing your check, please have it post-stamped by the 31st of December. And a heads up, we're testing out our online live streaming service. The Zoom ID is listed here. So basically, it's a live streaming of our outdoor service. Uh, so the Zoom ID is 9731619463. Uh, so we most probably will be moving uh, to the live streaming of outdoor services in January, meaning that there's, you know, you won't be seeing pre-recorded uh, services, uh, but we'll just look at the uh, live streaming of the outdoor services directly. Uh, this will save a lot of uh, workload for both the volunteers and for myself uh, once we're able to move to uh, just exclusively live streaming our outdoor services. So we'll keep you um, we'll keep you updated on that, so do watch out for emails as well as for announcements on that. But in the meantime, you can go ahead and you know, go to Zoom and type in that ID to watch the live uh, outdoor service. And once again, the prayer request, uh, recovery and safety of our community, community and country and world from the pandemic, job and financial security for our church members, uh, that the outdoor service and live streaming, uh, they will continue to go well and safely and pray for the ongoing youth services, and pray for the future church reopening plans, uh, whenever that is, uh, when, whenever it will happen. And now, uh, now we're going to have a time of uh, doxology. Let's pray. Eternal Father, we praise you with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind. And you and you alone deserve all the glory and all the praise. And now the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In Christ's most precious name we pray. Amen. That's it for today's service. See you next Sunday.